Hi, welcome to 30 Minutes of Success, Inspirational Tuesday Talk. And we are going live right now on Facebook. So I just want to welcome everybody to, um, gosh, it's almost the end of uh, September, is it not? Wow. Next Tuesday, we will be um, in October. So thank you for joining me for the last uh, September, 30 Minutes to Success, Inspirational Tuesday Talk. My name is Jackie Wright, and uh, we are just so pleased uh, that you've joined us, especially today. I think this is going to be uh, good for people who, and let me admit, uh, this is Juanita from California and everything. So thank you for being with us. So uh, we are going to get right in into it. I, I think this is going to be a very uh, good um, subject for those that, uh, if I can, <laughs> this is going to be a very good subject for those that um, are um, seeking. And then it's also going to be a good subject for those who have known the Lord uh, for a number of years or maybe all their lives, uh, just to remind us about um, how important it is to share with others uh, the gift of life that God gives us through uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so today we're going to be talking about salvation via the Romans road. So um, some of you might have uh, heard, heard of that previously. So thanks for joining me for um, this subject. Very important scriptures we're going to be going over. So I want to remind those that are uh, looking through Facebook that you can go back and look under the uh, description box and you'll see all of the scriptures that I'm going over. And as I share with you these scriptures, I just want to remind everybody that truly you should um, not just go by what I'm saying, but take some time and uh, go over these scriptures uh, yourself and uh, see what God speaks to you. Uh, because, you know, some of the things that I would um, get from what God says has a lot to do with my experiences, my life experiences, and how I think, and that sort of thing. But I can tell you, uh, because your experience is different from mine, you might get some additional nuggets or different nuggets out of the word of God than I have. So I just encourage everybody to look for themselves. So today we're talking about salvation via the Romans road and basically looking at the book of Romans. And I think it's um, kind of a follow-up from last week where we talked about the fact that you can't work your way into heaven. There's no, um, amount of perfection um, that you can have that will be the key uh, to you being in the presence of God forever. So uh, out of that, uh, I just thought, well, wait a minute, why don't we talk about salvation as you come to the knowledge of the Lord based on uh, the book of Romans. So Romans road is a uh, way to salvation is uh, the way a lot of people frame it. And it is something very simple that you can share with your family, you can share with your friends, you can share with your enemies for that matter. And uh, it's an interesting thing because God can make your enemies, uh, you know, uh, be at peace with you. So keep that in mind. So don't leave your enemies out of the category of people that you share um, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, with. So getting into scriptures right now, the key scriptures, it should say, instead of scripture, uh, because we have several. And the first one that I chose uh, is from the book of John, the 14th book. And it says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Romans 3 and 20, it says, therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, <clears throat> we become conscious of our sin. So uh, the law is kind of a litmus test. Uh, it is not the thing that makes you a certain way. It, it makes you aware of how much you need the Lord. 
uh, Acts 4 and 12, it says, uh, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under the heavens given to mankind by which we must be saved. And so basically, uh, yeah, Jesus is the only way. I, I guess it was, there was a, um, in the 60s, there, there were uh, some hippies and they were just saying the only way you know, that was the, the mantra that they were uh, declaring and they were declar declaring the truth. And going further, we can see that it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone which builders rejected which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And so I just share that with you a little bit more um, about, you know, when it says no one, uh, no one else, it's referring to Jesus Christ. As you look at the scriptures in Acts 4, uh, just, ab um, uh, just above that, and you will see that it is by the name of Jesus Christ whom you crucified, where there's a situation where uh, this man was healed. Um, as uh, and Peter is talking about the fact that the man was healed in the name of Jesus and no others as he was standing before um, the religious leaders that wanted to uh, wanted an account of why are you uh, healing people <laughs> and in what name are you healing people and instead of them being uh, excited about it they were angry about it why because that means that it's going to be a shift in the um, you know the the paradigm of things what you're going to, you're able, people are able to go and speak in the name of Jesus and somebody's going to be healed. Well, who's going to pay attention to us? We can't do that kind of thing. And so as a result, um, there was this, um, this outcry by the, uh, by the religious leaders. They were angry because it wasn't going to be status quo anymore, you know? And it's so interesting how sometimes you're doing good in the name of the Lord and people are angry with you for doing so. Um, well, because it makes them change their paradigm. It challenges them. They might have to do something different themselves and they don't uh, want to change. For the most part, people don't want to change. And in bonus, uh, our bonus scripture I give, re give you every week is Psalm 22, 24, for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him, but when he cried to him, he heard. Okay. And so the other PowerPoint that I have here, uh, I go over every week and that's John 1 and 3, Colossians 1 and 16, and Hebrews 1 and 2. And that talks about the fact that Jesus is the one that uh, created um, the world as we know it. And 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 28 talks about the hierarchy uh, that all things, all power has been given to the Lord Jesus Christ. But once he gets everything in order here on earth, all things will be submitted to God the Father. So there you have it, folks, you know, in a quick nutshell. And I have some resources for you. Um, eternal life is a gift from God through Christ Jesus. And basically, um, that is the other PowerPoint leading into the resources. Uh, what is the Romans road to salvation? You have some links and those of you who are going to see this posted on YouTube can click those links and go directly to it. And then also uh, those that have uh, access to Facebook, you can go to those links and click onto it. Uh, you can also copy and paste uh, that sort of thing. And also we have uh, examples of the prayers of salvation, about three prayers that I, I've uh, included that you can take a look at. But let's get right into uh, some of those scriptures once again. And it's worth repeating. Uh, John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus, in his words, established that, 
hey, you're not going to be saved any other way. You're not going to be saved by uh, doing a thousand prayers and asking for forgiveness based on the thousands of prayers and all the things that you've done, all the works. Uh, if that first prayer is not the prayer of salvation, asking the Lord Jesus Christ uh, to be your Lord and Savior, because we can do nothing without him. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Now he's already said he's the only way. And as he is the only way, he's he uh, as he's leaving, this is the last last chapter of Matthew. And he's uh, just before he ascends into heaven, he says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So Jesus just established in John 14 before he died that, hey, I'm the only way. And then also he gave some directions to us that we should speak and share with people and make disciples of other people. And, you know, when you say make disciples, we're not saying go in there and you're just going to uh, <clears throat> beat people into uh, submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. That doesn't that doesn't work. What God wants is hearts, and he wants those hearts to be yielded to him. Um, even in Deuteronomy, uh, back in the Old Testament, uh, God gave us choice. I give you th this day choice, uh, whether you will accept death or whether you're going to accept life. And so if you accept God's way, you got life. If you don't, then you have chosen uh, death. And once again, Acts 4 and 12, it says salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind to which we must be saved. So salvation is found in no one else. And I know a lot of people of the world balk at that. And so balk all you want. Uh, that's what the word of God says, that there's no one else by which you could be saved. And nobody's beating you to, you know, you either accept the truth or you don't. And it is your choice to do so. But don't, uh, you know, go around uh, just being very negative about uh, Christianity because it is bold enough to speak what God has spoken and that there is no other way to be saved except through the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you look from Genesis to Revelation, it's all there in the book. Um, you know, you live... Um, dealing, making sure you are walking in the things of God, you don't, you don't live. So it's, it's just a matter of choice. So no, no need to get all upset because it's not the way you thought it would be. And you thought it was like, uh, everybody says that if you are good outweighs your bad, then you're entering into, uh, the kingdom of God forever. The Bible doesn't teach that. So get the truth. So what does the Bible teach? We just went over the fact that Jesus is the only way to the Father, one way. And then um, let's go into these scriptures that talk about the steps to salvation. You know, and I think one of the uh, most difficult things about um, coming to the realization of what thus saith the Lord and that Jesus is the only way is because God has given us such magnificent minds. He's given us such magnificent abilities and people can do great and marvelous things beyond what we can uh, imagine. And just, you know, just think about uh, the internet and what we're using, even as I communicate with you and how marvelous man is, but it's so easy to get caught up for man to get caught up in the tools and the works of their, his hands that he forgets um, the God that has allowed it to be. So one thing about looking at salvation, we have to, with all of our marvelous things that we accomplish, um, we don't want to accept the fact that uh, we have a sin nature. And as a result of that, I'm not all that bad. I, I don't do this. I don't do that. I'm not up here carrying on like some of these celebrities and everything. And all you do the comparisons analysis, you know, and speaking of celebrities and some of the things that are coming out in the news, which are very sad and just very hurtful in a lot of ways is the fact that there are those celebrities that are outside of the will of God. And it's sad, 
But what about all of those unknown people that are behaving in the same way, but who have not um, been called out yet? And there's a scripture that talks about the fact that there are sins that go before the throne and there are sins that trail afterwards, meaning, you know, before you even get to the throne of God for judgment, you know, your sins are out there and it's obvious. And then there are those things that people do that won't be accounted for until they're actually in the presence of God. And it's interesting. I said that they're not accounted for, but even in the midst of doing sin and wrong, um, God calls us into accountability and you reap what you sow. And so a lot of things where uh, things are not working, you're not progressing, uh, no matter how uh, you uh, lie, cheat, and steal, it's just a law of the universe. You know, you reap what you sow. So let's go ahead and talk about, um, you know, Romans um, 3.23, one of the first scriptures you go over. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. Jackie Wright has sinned. Jackie Wright sins. That's why Jackie Wright has to throw herself before the throne of God and ask for forgiveness and ask for strength to do better. We're all, we've all for, fall short. We have all done things that are displeasing to God. There is no one who is innocent. And in Romans 3, uh, 10 through 18, it gives you some examples of what that sin looks like, the things that we do, the lying, the cheating, the stealing, uh, just deception and all the kinds of things that uh, just keep this world from not, from not working right and, and keeps uh, people in a heartbreaking state because we know if we would just treat each other right, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, this world would be a better place. But alas, people don't do that. And Romans 6, 23a says, for the wages of sin is death. And let's get the uh, other part of that, 6, uh, 23b. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So we've all done wrong. We're going to get paid for it. And the pay for death, for sin is death, annihilation, can't be in the presence of God for eternity. But the gift of of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. There is a way. Romans 5 and 8, it says, but God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Can you imagine? I mean, it's one thing to die for somebody who's doing right, but to die for somebody who's doing wrong and then the entire world at that, um, past, present, and future. Wow. Um, how, why? That's a mystery of God, but I just thank him that he's written to us. He's, he's telling us that he loved us so much that even while we were sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. And in uh, Romans 10 and 9, it says, because if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Isn't that magnificent? We will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from death. Saved from having to um, reap the benefits of our sowing in evil. Saved from the judgment of God. Saved from living in uh, in eternity uh, without the, uh, the presence of God, outside of the presence of God, ultimately constantly deteriorated. But what are we saved to? We talk a lot about what we're saved from, but what are we saved to? We are saved uh, from being, to being in the presence of God, saved to be able to be in the presence of God and for all the magnificent things that he's going to unfold for us. And what we're glimpsing here on earth, all of the great uh, things that we learn through technology and the different things, you know, how to fly, you know, the, the fact, uh, you know, it was only in the early 1900s that we um, 
you know, could barely get off the ground. And then look at it, we're jetting around not only uh, the earth, but we're traveling to um, the moon and preparing to go to Mars and, and various places. And if the Lord delays, I believe we're going to accomplish those things if he delays his um, coming. But I tell you, with all of the signs that are happening, it seems like, uh, wow, he's going to be here soon. And the thing of it is, he is here soon for each and every one of us, because if we don't live to the point where the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ returns, we do live to the point that we return to him. How many people uh, come on this earth and um, they're only on this earth for a minute? They go to the Lord Jesus Christ or those that live to be a hundred go to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, they return to him. So we're going to, uh, be returning to the Lord, whether he returns to us here on earth. And we're, as um, Job talks about that, I'm going to see my redeemer uh, standing on earth, whether we're here when that actual act happens, or uh, we leave this earth uh, because of different situations that come. Uh, some people that just fall asleep in their, uh, in their, in the, as they sleep uh, and they're gone. And some people who have heart attacks, some people who have other diseases, accidents and things. But, you know, we are going to leave this place. And so I think it's important for us to prepare. And the whole reason for this discussion is to talk about the steps of salvation for us to realize that we need a God. And uh, this is what this is all about. In Romans 10 and 13, it says, for Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I love that because it ties into uh, that scripture I, I bring up uh, every week. And that is uh, from Psalm 22, um, 24, that uh, bonus scripture that I give you. I give you Psalm 22, 24, for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard. So that is, it just, just shows the depth uh, in the Bible, that scripture from Psalms, you know, um, I think I've shared with you before that that particular scripture is a Messianic Psalm. And it is a description of Jesus being on the cross. And he cried out to God. He uh, was like, you know, why have you forsaken me? And in the reality is, as Jesus cried out to God and God the Father heard him, God the Father hears us and we will be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so that's what's so wonderful. We didn't have to know that. I, every time I see something in the Bible, I see some marvelous um promises and uh, marvelous examples of uh, God's love. It's just fascinating to me because it's like, you know, I could have gone through life not ever knowing, not ever hearing that, but it was written for me to hear. And with technology that we have, it can be uh, pronounced in so many different ways. And so, you know, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved for those that need saving. And for those uh, who are saved, uh, you can share the fact with um, some loved ones that are going through whatever they're going through. Uh, if they had the Lord on their side, uh, it would just be that much better for them. And what are the results of salvation when you call upon the name of the Lord? Number one, and these are just some, some examples here. Uh, we're in Romans once again. Romans 5 and 1, it says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we don't have to worry about the wrath of God. We are at peace with God once we have called upon uh, the Lord uh, to be our Lord and Savior, okay? That's in uh, Romans 5 and 1. Romans 8 and 1 says, Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. We don't have to worry about um, being uh, told, 
you know, get, get out. I never knew you. We don't have to worry about that because we um, are not under the wrath of God. There is no con condemnation for us. That's how Romans 8 starts out. And I'll tell you, if you take a moment, a few minutes to read um, Romans, please do. You'll be so encouraged. Uh, I think those of you who are seeking, who don't know the Lord, I think it will encourage you to, uh, you know, humble your heart and ask God to be with you. Uh, in Romans 8, 38 and 29, it says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, a lot of things go on in life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow. Basically, we can stand against anything when we have bowed our knees before uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what it is saying to us. And it shares a lot. You know, number one, 1 Corinthians says that death is our enemy. So, okay, there it is. Neither death, you know, will be able to separate us from the love of God, nor life, these things that happen in life, neither angels nor demons. And so there are angels and there are demons and there are people um, that are practicing witchcraft and everything that want to have you submitted to their will instead of the will of God. And that's something very wrong. And, you know, it's something that I would not pay very much, did not pay very much attention to because I just thought, oh, this is, this is just from, you know, witchcraft. Isn't that just from those, um, you know, Brothers Grimm stories and those ch childhood stories and stuff like that, witchcraft. But then I had to look in uh, the last chapter of, uh, last two chapters of uh, Revelation 21 and 22. There it is. Jesus brings up the issue of witchcraft, that that is something we should not be practicing. So people do that. And so it's like, even even neither death ain't, um, neither uh, angels nor demons. And what does it say in Ephesians 6? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. It's like, wow, thank God for the tool of his word that helps us cut through um, the things of life that we have to deal with, with uh, all of the evil things that people do, uh, murder, robbing, stealing, and everything that, um, the deception that goes on and everything. So you know, praise God for the Lord Jesus Christ. I um, can't imagine what it's, I don't even want to think about what it's like trying to get through this life without the Lord. And then at the end, um, to be separated him, from him forever and just being in a, a world of uh, degradation, being cast into the place that God did not intend for man. And it says that in the Bible, God did not intend for man to be in hell or the lake of fire that was um, for Satan and his angels, his demons, you know, not for us, but we have a choice and we can choose whether we want, uh, you know, to be in the presence of the Lord or not. And it's like, wow, eternity is a long time. So why don't we take some time to think about it, evaluate it, don't eat up all your time trying to uh, achieve uh, the various things in life, climbing uh, the Kilimanjaro, uh, you know, trying to, you know, get to the highest uh, summit of, of uh, Everest and all of these great things that you can do, things that you can do and not take the time to, you know, open a Bible or Google a verse or two and to try to find out about eternal life. Wow. And why? Because in Psalm 23 and 6, it says, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love that. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The very last verse of Psalm 23, that is um, pretty famous. A lot of people know that. And, you know, they just 
speak it rotely, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I mean, that's powerful. The Lord is my shepherd. He's the one who leads me. I won't be in want because he leads me, you know, besides the still waters. He restores my soul, you know, because we, we need restoration dealing with some of the stuff that we have to deal with in life. But in, as it ends, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And so that's one of the reasons we are talking about salvation and um, making it through uh, the the Romans um, road. And those scriptures are steps as you realize um, that you, that we, humankind, we're sinners, you know? Um, so to be able to, to recognize that and then ultimately to believe the word of God and then also to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so I, I shared with you the fact that we have some some prayers uh, that you can uh, take a look at. And uh, there are three prayers and everything um, that in the resources um, that you can utilize. But the the simplest prayer you could pray is, Father in heaven, forgive me for my sins. I need help. I can't make it without you. I believe Jesus was raised from the dead and that he covered my sins and I ask him into my heart. And I pray in Jesus name, amen. Or help Lord, you know, God knows what's in your heart. Sometimes just help, you know, he hears your cry. And so all of the words that are written here, all of the uh, things that could be said, you know, God knows your heart. It's like, hey, I need some help here. And especially people that are just bogged down in chains of addictions and habits that ultimately would destroy them. God is there for you and you can help. Ask for help and he will deliver you. So those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we're going to end here and we're going to just um, once again uh, go back and repeat what was it last week that kind of brought us to this point to talk about uh, the steps of salvation and the results. And that was from last week. We talked about Romans 3 in that book that good is not good enough. Works and perfections are not key to the kingdom. We are saved through faith in Christ Jesus alone. So that's it, my brothers and sisters. And for those who are not my brothers and sisters, because you are not part of the kingdom, you have not been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. I pray that God will bring you, that the Holy Spirit will move upon you of what you hear or what you hear others say so that you can be a part of his kingdom forever and ever. So I really appreciate you stopping through for 30 Minutes to Success Inspirational Tuesday Talk. God bless and keep you. Um, all you have to do is cry out, help to the Lord and be saved. And then additionally, there are those other scripture, scriptures because if you're crying out help to God, he knows that you are admitting you're a sinner. You can't do without him. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're confessing that, but you need help. So God bless and keep you and uh, just live a valiant, great life and stop imitating the things of the world, the flesh that leads to absolutely nothing that leads to death. God bless and keep you. And I thank you for joining me for 30 Minutes to Success, Inspirational Tuesday Talk. My name is Jackie Wright. Don't take my word for it. Get in that word yourself. God bless. So I praise the Lord for this time of being on um, this, this time. Just being able to share uh, with whoever may stop and see this. God bless and keep you and do a marvelous thing above what I could dare think, ask, or imagine.